There's a new South Park special out on Paramount Plus, and it's a real spicy one. It takes shots at Disney, pandering, reactionary YouTubers, white-collar college grads, tech billionaires, and AI, all while delivering that same raunchy humor you've come to expect. If you haven't seen it yet, go take a look, but if you want to learn more, then you've come to the right place. We've collected a bunch of facts to deepen your knowledge, reveal some Easter eggs, and even show you how folks mentioned in the episode reacted. It's time for 57 facts about South Park joining the Panderverse. Welcome back to Channel Frederator. Make sure you like this video if you like it, and subscribe if you want to see more like this. Let's get these facts going. Number 1. You might have noticed a few different voices this time around. That's because in this episode, we've entered the Panderverse, replacing characters with diverse female leads. Number 2. This is the first time in series history that the main cast will be shown with their genders flipped. Seems like that's something they could have done before, don't you think? Number 3. Their personalities seem to be largely intact, but their looks are far from normal. Cartman now appears to be a black woman, Kenny appears to be an Asian woman, Kyle appears to be an Indian woman, and Stan appears to be a Hispanic woman. Number 4. Kenny's coat doesn't fit over the mouth of his new design, leaving him free to really enunciate whatever would usually get muffled. Like, talking about knockers and other stuff. Number 5. Cartman's alternate self is voiced by Janisha adams Ginyard, best known for her acting and stunt work in live-action TV shows like Station 19 and Lovecraft Country. Number 6. adams Ginyard also works in movies and has appeared in Black Panther Wakanda Forever as a member of the Dora Milaje. I wonder how Disney feels about her involvement in this episode. Number 7. Stan's alternate self is voiced by Mo Ashley. Mo can also be seen in the ACM official short called Mukbang 2. Number 8. Kyle's alternate self is voiced by Bibi Mama, whose other credits include Romeo and Juliet, A COVID Tragedy, and Her First Kill. Two dramatic shorts. Number 9. Kenny's alternate self is voiced by Diana Lauren Jones, who also plays roles in Quarter and All the Beautiful Things. Number 10. It's not just the core four who have changed either. Butters has a new design as well, and is voiced by Montana Jakobowitz. She's known for her role as Peaches Thomas in the series Too Real For You. Number 11. Of course, the regular versions of the characters are still voiced by Matt Stone and Trey Parker. This episode, however, is written specifically by Parker. Number 12. You might be wondering why the famously elementary school-aged boys from Colorado have suddenly become patriarchy-minded women. Well, it seems that Cartman has been having recurring nightmares of his favorite people being replaced by diverse women. These dreams begin to come true with a little meddling from some entertainment execs, and Cartman is transported to another universe. Maybe a little on the nose, but when has South Park ever been subtle? Number 13. Cartman is scared that Disney execs, specifically Kathleen Kennedy, might be under his bed. A play on the classic monster under the bed. Of course, Kathleen Kennedy is a real person. She is the president of Lucasfilm. Number 14. South Park writers love video games, and this is apparent right away. Cartman's mom tells him that he can't stay home all day playing Baldur's Gate 3. That game's only been out for three months at the time of writing this video. Number 15. When Cartman is left alone in his room, the camera pans up to reveal a title card for this special. It's done up in the style of the classic Disney intro, complete with magical sounding music, curly font, a traced line sailing over everything, and a mountain and trees replacing the iconic Disney castle. Number 16. On Tegrity Farms, you can see a classic kitchen decoration hung above the stovetop with a little Tegrity twist. Instead of home sweet home, we've got hemp sweet hemp. Number 17. The phone number on the different handyman trucks that we see throughout the episode does not work. You can try calling it, but you won't really get anywhere. Number 18. What does work, however, are the handyman, and would you look at that, they often rock that wicked plumber's crack. Number 19. The shrink that Cartman goes to see has a degree on his wall from Colorado State University, Doctorate of Clinical Psychology. You could actually go to Colorado State and take psychology. It's ranked number four in the state. Number 20. The doctor also has what looks like a Jackson Pollock hanging on the wall. I'm no art expert, but a cursory search seems to say that it's a take on Mural, a painting he did in 1943. Number 21. In Cartman's imaginary version of Kathleen Kennedy's office, there's a plethora of Star Wars memorabilia. You can see figures of a Stormtrooper and Captain Phasma, Anakin's lightsaber, Han's blaster, which is missing its scope, and a rendering of BB-8 on her mug. Number 22. 
Also, for whatever reason, Cartman imagines that Kathleen Kennedy looks like him in a wig. Number 23. When offered free therapy in exchange for odd jobs by the psychologist, the handyman mentions that he's doing his therapy using an AI Freudbot app. Sigmund Freud is considered to be the father of psychoanalysis, a method used to treat pathologies originating from conflicts in the psyche. Number 24. When Randy has his conversation with Siri about repairing his oven door, his use of the phrase, hey Siri, can actually activate iOS devices. Number 25. Cartman claims that he's seeing into other universes, which has been causing his nightmares about the diverse women replacing people. Kyle responds that everyone's sick of the multiverse, mirroring the fatigue of the concept in the real world. Number 26. Lots of folks in South Park have hit hard times thanks to AI. The list of services people are offering outside of the Home Depot include tax prep, insurance, accounting advice, lawyer services, computer programming, graphic design, medical transcription, data analysis, and more. Number 27. The handyman that rolls up to ask for help is rolling in dough though. He's rocking a Louis Vuitton hat and some wild rims on his truck. Number 28. The naming convention 216-B is a play on Marvel's system of numbering their different universes. There doesn't seem to be any Marvel universe known as Earth 216 though. There is a 6216, which takes a look at 100 years into the future. Number 29. When Cartman gets slurped up into a bubble and tossed into another universe, the exact same thing is mirrored in the other universe. Baldur's Gate 3 still exists there. Number 30. Even in other universes, some stuff always stays the same. The other Cartman's pronunciation of Kyle is still Kyle. F you, Kyle. This is serious. You and he still loves to yell, "God damn it!" Oh, God damn it! Number thirty-one. The mob of white-collar workers that make their way to the college for a refund includes the likes of Stan Bruflovsky, Stephen Stotch, and Steve Black. Number thirty-two. One of the background characters in Universe 216-B wears a Wonder Woman t-shirt. Number 33. The boardroom at Disney is full of iconic memorabilia as well. You can spot Cinderella's glass slipper, the genie's lamp from Aladdin, Grogu from The Mandalorian, and Mickey's wizard hat from Fantasia. Number 34. The handymen get into a pissing match about who can acquire more multi-billion dollar businesses, culminating in them setting up an MMA fight. Sound familiar? Number 35. They even get into a space race. Number 36. Butters fans will be happy to hear that there is an updated version of his famous Apples song from the other universe. Lulu, Lulu, I got some apples. Lulu, Lulu, you got some too. Number 37. Cartman jumps out of two windows in an attempt to escape Kathleen Kennedy. Number 38. The boys aren't the only characters that get gender swapped. Mr. Garrison gets dreads, Jimbo wears higher heeled boots, and Detective Harris, well, Detective Harris still has a mustache. Even Colonel Sanders of KFC is a diverse woman in Universe 216-B. Number 39. City Walk gets a name change in this universe and is now known as City Woke. Number 40. In the Disney archives, there's plenty of other memorabilia. Inside of glass cases, you can see a Buzz Lightyear spacesuit, Snow White's dress, a Pinocchio puppet, Arthur's sword in the stone, a statuette of Mike Wazowski, and hand-drawn animation frames strewn about. Also, the Pander Stone is there, but you knew that. Number 41. As Randy tumbles through the multiverse, he's given all sorts of different outfits, including a McDonald's uniform. Number 42. When Kenny dies, it's not you bastard, but instead you f Number 43. When Kathleen Kennedy chases Cartman through the streets of Universe 216-B, the music in the background is a parody of music from Terminator 2. She even runs like the T-1000. Number 44. You can already purchase joining the Pandaverse merchandise on the South Park shop, featuring all four boys' alternative selves. Number 45. As of right now, Pandaverse sits at a 64 on Metacritic based on 19 critic reviews, but an 8.5 when it comes to user score, with a whopping 2,383 ratings. It's being praised for lampooning Disney's lazy pandering, as well as the reactionary online community that can't seem to handle it when it happens. Number 46. 
Disney has not made any statements responding to the episode, nor has Kathleen Kennedy. Some folks may imply that there were some hurt feelings, but there's no proof of that happening. Number 47. Gina Carano, formerly of The Mandalorian, took to X to pontificate on how Kathleen Kennedy might react to the episode. She suggested that Kennedy might take extreme action to censor creators reacting to the Pandaverse, but so far nothing of the sort has happened. Number 48. Butters' dad, Steven, is just as bad to his son in Universe 216B as he is in the normal South Park universe. No fun. Be more miserable. Number 49. The adults in the regular South Park universe seemingly have no problem with Cartman suddenly being a black woman. Whether this is apathy or a willingness to accept the newer progressive order is up in the air. Number 50. Baldur's Gate 3 developer Larian Studios responded to Stan's claim that you can't transfer save files between PC and PS5. You can indeed transfer your saves. Number 51. This is the first of the one-hour South Park specials made as part of the Paramount Plus deal that isn't a two-parter. Everything gets taken care of all at once, unlike post-COVID and the streaming wars. Number 52. Randy's broken oven door ends up saving the day, acting as a weird sort of Chekhov's gun. Good thing he didn't listen to Sharon and just get it fixed, right? He's working on it. Number 53. The Panderstone can essentially do all of the work for Disney execs, but often puts out an inferior product, especially when overused. This can be seen as a metaphor for using AI to generate stuff as well, tying the two plots of the episode together. Number 54. Interestingly enough, Randy shouldn't technically be reliant on handymen to do anything. He used to make a home reno show called White People Flipping Houses, where he performed plenty of basic repairs himself. Maybe technology really did make him lazy. Number 55. Miles Morales gets a shout out from the boys when confronted with Panderverse Cartman. PC Principal accuses them of not accepting a black Spider-Man, but they claim they love Miles Morales. He's his own character with his own thing. Number 56. At the end of the episode, Kathleen Cartman ends up back in her original place, neither in the Panderverse or in the regular South Park universe, but instead in an alien realm. There, she's served a bowl of cereal by a hideous creature, but the creature still sounds exactly like Leanne Cartman. Number 57. Also, the horrifying bowl of Kyle's cereal simply sounds like a pitched up Kyle. And there you have it. A cereal bowl full of sentient facts floating around in delicious alien milk. So what did you think of this latest South Park special? It generated a lot of buzz online, and it seems that a lot of people are picking sides. Interesting, considering how very both sides are wrong the messaging seems to be, but hey, everything's up to interpretation, right? Are you excited for the next South Park special? Which has been your favorite so far? Make sure to let us know down in the comments and subscribe to Channel Frederator for more like this. Thanks for watching, and remember, Frederator loves you.